Hello and welcome to the pharmacology class. This is the growth paramedic and today we have something awesome to continue off with from the last video that we ran which was about morphine. Morphine. Today we're going to be looking at adrenaline. Now adrenaline also has another name it goes by and then there's epinephrine. So I'll write that down in case in case you're not aware of uh, what adrenaline is. But generally you should know that adrenaline is epinephrine. Uh, we're going to be structuring this the same format as the previous video. So we're going to go with the definition first and what it's used for. Then we're going to go with the pharmacodynamics. So you, as you know, pharmaco stands for what the drug does to the body. And then we're going to go with the uh, precautions. So things that I think are important that you should be aware of if you're going to administer adrenaline. And we will timestamp them. So if you are in a rush, because I think this video might be a bit longer than the other one, um, by time stamping them, you can quickly go to whatever one that you need to go to. For example, if you're quickly refreshing what adrenaline is, you can go straight to the pharmacodynamics. So we're currently, I think, in the introduction timestamp. Um, just before we begin, I will just do a quick disclaimer. So this channel is for educa educational purposes only. It is not intended as medical advice. While I always strive for 100% accuracy, errors may occur and medications and protocols do change over time. I am a registered paramedic and I do, do do quite a lot of research and make sure all the information I say is to the the most accurate it can be, but please do not rely solely on the information provided on this channel, but as additional enforcement to your learning either at paramedic school or if you're on road as a practicing clinician. So now that we got all that kind of uh, politics out of the way, let's go straight to the, the first one. So we're going to go with definition of uh, adrenaline. So let's write that down. I'm going to go with the usages. Now there's quite a few things that you can use adrenaline for, so I'm just going to do a quick little list here, just so you can get your uh, your brain going. So cardiac arrests, bradycardia, and you'll know that when we go through the pharmacodynamics, you'll see why some of these things um, are linked to uh, to adrenaline use, because again. Most, if not all, the treatments that we do in the pre-hospital setting, and especially when we're using drugs, are aimed at treating exactly what's going wrong in the medical condition. So, for example, for anaphylaxis, and we will cover anaphylaxis and all these medical conditions in a separate, in separate videos. For, for example, for anaphylaxis, you have the, um, you have the drop in blood pressure, and you have the. Um, the increased heart rate and you know the swelling of the of the throat so ad adrenaline usage is there to kind of reduce that or to stop it or to reverse it and the same thing with um overdoses overdoses and atrophine so yep so let's continue we kind of diverged a bit there so croup and uh, newborn recession newborn resuscitation Perfect. And as you can see, it is quite an exhaustive list, but just bear in mind, depending on where you are in the world, the ambulance service that you work for or are looking to work with, they might not have adrenaline indicated in these in all of these conditions. It really does depend on the state or where you're working at. But generally, it is a very common drug that you will see in ambulance or in a medication drug kit. So adrenaline is known as epinephrine. So you might see this in medication kits or, or whatnot, but generally you always usually see it as adrenaline. Now adrenaline is a sympatho, sympathomimetic. It is naturally occurring Catecholamine, catecholamine, sorry, naturally occurring catecholamine. Let me actually rewrite that. I think this ink is a bit thick, so let's let's try that because I still want you to be able to read when I'm writing. But uh, again, I don't have the neatest writing in the world, but I do try my best. So catecholamine, catecholamine, 
I do apologize. Some of these words I still can't pronounce even after so many years trying to uh, pronounce them. Um, but basically, it is a sympathomimetic. It's a naturally occurring um, catecholamine. So it's found in the body and it acts on alpha and beta adrenergic receptors now here there are a few words that uh, I want to break down because they seem quite menacing so we're going to break down sympathomimetic um, catecholamines memes and adrenergic receptors uh, so ba basically with adrenaline it is sympathomimetic and it acts on the alpha and the beta receptors and we'll go through that more in the um, the the pharmacodynamics so firstly let's work out sympatho sympathomimetic sympathomimetic I do apologize if my pronunciations aren't 100% spot on but I do try my best here so sympathomimetic they are drugs that stimulate compounds that mimic effects of endogenous agonists of the sympathetic nervous system so similar to morphine when adrenaline is administered it acts on specific receptors um, it has an agonist effect so adrenaline has an agonist effect which means it produces a biological response now that being the sympathetic nervous system and as we know sympathetic nervous system is a flight or fight response. So administration of adrenaline will cause it to produce a flight or fight response because it will act on the sym sympathetic nervous system by connecting or binding to the um, alpha and beta and alpha and beta receptors. Okay, perfect. Now, for the um, the flight or fight response, so the sympathetic nervous system, basically, um, activation results in a sudden flooding of hormones that boosts the body's so your body's alertness heart rate so HR and it also has uh, other effects as well and essentially um, all this uh, works to prepare the body to either run away or fight. So that's the key thing, to run away or to fight. That is a sympathetic nervous system and that is what it means by adrenaline being a sympathomimetic. Now let's go to the one that I always have trouble pronouncing, but let's see if we can change that today. The, catecho the catecholamines. Um, Catecholamines, here we go. Now, catecholamines, they are hormones produced by your adrenal gland. Okay. And the adrenal gland can, or the adrenal gland is 
found on top of your kidneys. You don't really need to know that, not really important, but hey, if you have a trivia question saying, hey, where are the adrenal glands? You can say it's on top of the kidneys. So on top of the kidneys. I can't tell you, I think it's on both kidneys, but can't confirm right now. <laughs> but basically examples of these um, catecholamine hormones are dopamine, um, epinephrine, and Oh, that's a terrible and I'm just going to do and nor epinephrine. Now you don't know I will explain these all and I won't explain the nor epinephrine or the dopamine but basically um, catecholamines are hormones produced by the adrenal gland and they produce these three hormones that are released into the body. Now this is a really important one I'm going to write next. So when you are physically or emotionally stressed The adrenal gland, yep, so as we mentioned, adrenal gland will, sorry, will release these hormones, um, these hormones are catecholamines, catecholamines um, into the bloodstream. And that is when you know when you're scared or when you're afraid. Or have you ever um, was about to do a public speaking um, thing when you have to go up in front of everyone and and do a speech, and you start feeling very stressed? Well, in those moments, that's when you get that release of hormones from the adrenal gland. So that's when your heart starts to race. You start to feel dizzy. It's almost like you want to vomit. That is what that is what's happening to your body, and. Um, that is also a really important thing to be aware of as a paramedic because, um, and I don't know whether to write it down. Well, I'll, I'll explain it, the reason why. So, so physical, emotional stress, adrenal gland will release these um, catecholamines. Um, and as a paramedic or an EMT, or an EMT, um, we need to be calming down patients all the time. So in your OSCEs or in your assessments, one of the key thing, or one of the key assessments is um, reassuring patients. Um, we need to de-escalate, uh, de-escalate, or we need to uh, lower any hostilities or de-escalate, de-escalating hostile situations, basically. And always act in a calm demeanor when interacting. Um, calm demeanor um, when interacting with patients, because if a patient is stressed, or if you're rest of 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 or if you're stressed out, the release of these catecholamines from a st uh, from a stress response can elevate uh, the heart rate, agitate patients and ultimately hinder a paramedic's treatment and management of patients. Um, we'll, we, we kind of talked a bit of the pharmacodynamics in this, but we will dig deeper on the effects of adrenaline using the pharmacodynamics. So we're not gonna, we're gonna keep doing the definition part, but basically just be aware with the catecholamines, um, they're produced by the adrenal gland and they are released in a stress response. And that can be either physical or that could be emotional. Now, finally, in the definition part, I want to talk about the adrenergic. Receptors. So, similar to the mu, kappa, and delta, delta receptors for morphine. The adrenergic, adrenergic receptors are recept are receptors that target many of the catecholam catecholamines, such as adrenaline, dopamine, and um, norepinephrine.
um, and they bind um, producing a biological response uh, so it's hard talking and writing at the same time I'm still getting used to this but Generally with the adrenergic receptors as you mentioned in the previous video when morphine is administered in the body It um, binds to the mu kappa and delta receptors and since morphine is an agonist It causes a biological response or produces a biological response such as pain relief in a very similar sense When adrenaline is administered to a patient it binds to these adrenergic receptors which are the alpha ones the beta ones and the beta 2 receptors and since adrenaline is an agonist as well, it also produces a biological response. And we will go through that in the pharmacodynamics, which actually, um, we will do that right now. So let's head off. So we kind of got the definition now. Um, we know that uh, adrenaline is a sympathomimetic, um, and it basically um, causes a flight or fight response in the body when it's administered. So now we'll go into the pharmacodynamics. If I can write, what's happening here? Where's my pen? There it is. Well, that might be a bit too short. Let's go. Pharmacodynamics. Now, for those just hopping in for the first time, pharmacodynamics is basically what the drug does to the Body. And I think it's really important that all paramedics or EMTs know what drugs do to the body because obviously if you're administering something to the patient, you need to know what could happen if you do it. And also, if a patient asks you what you are doing or why you're giving this drug to them, if you can give them um, a response or give them a, 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 like a, a, a quick rundown of what the drug does, it also reassures them that you know what you're doing. And that's really important to build that rapport with patients because if you say to them, or they ask you, why are you giving adrenaline? And you say, oh, I don't know. Um, it's in my records or protocols and I'm just giving it to you, man. Then they're not going to be, they're not going to feel <laughs> very confident in your treatment style. And that might cause you no know, trouble in the future if you're trying to get things from them because they might not be comfortable in what you're doing. Okay, perfect. Um, we talked a bit too much here. Uh, we now know what adrenaline is and what can be used for. So we will look at the pharmacodynamics. So adrenaline, as we quickly mentioned, is an agonist. And I mentioned again in the previous video, agonists activate receptors to produce a biological response. Adrenaline acts on now this is really important guys really important the alpha one beta one and beta two uh, let's change it receptors Um, so think of it as um, A and BB. I like to remember for, uh, for, and for adrenaline, you know, the two bananas, the BBs, B1 and B2. So just remember that alpha 1, beta 1, beta 2. Um, and we'll look at these two, these three. It's my bad. So let me just, we will look at these three separately and how they, how adrenaline bind to them and how they um, they act in the body. Now, mind you, I will be only describing them and kind of going through it at a paramedic level. There are videos out there that kind of really go into it, into like an intracellular level, and we're not aiming to do that because, again, that's a bit too much of a brain overload. Um, it's mainly what does um, these interactions do to the body, and that's kind of the the idea of these videos is making it relevant to paramedics so they get the information that they need and not too much okay so let me think here let us if we're going to go we'll go with the alpha ones first though so when adrenaline because I've already explained to you, the alpha ones and the beta ones and beta twos, I don't need to explain again how they bind, because again, we said that adrenaline is an agonist when it is administered 
um, it will bind to these receptors because these receptors um, uh, target um, adrenaline or the catecho catecholamines. Um, similar to morphine, again, with the mu delta uh, kappa receptors, they also target morphine, so they will bind and they will produce a biological res um, response. Now we'll look at the biological response. So for adrenaline, when it acts, adrenaline act on alpha-1 receptors. So now we're going to the first um, um Oh no, whoops. Now we're going to the first receptor that it acts on, so alpha 1s. When it binds and creates a biological response, it induces increased vascular smooth or smooth muscle contraction. Uh, pupil uh, pupillary dilator muscle contraction and intestinal sphincter muscle contraction. So the main thing to get from here, if from these three things, is that this receptor, when it binds to adrenaline, it will cause vasoconstriction. So the, the blood vessels will get essentially tighter, um, which is cause increased smooth muscle contraction. And that causes an increase, so increase in blood pressure, so BP. So that's the main thing you wanna be aware of when it comes to alpha-1 receptors. Now, when adrenaline, when adrenaline acts on beta one receptors, let's uh, let's highlight that. Um, if you need to write these down, just um, you can just pause the video and just quickly write them down. But for the beta one receptors. Um, adrenaline will increase heart rate increase uh, myocardial contractility and this is a good one as well um, it will cause um, renin, renin, renin release. I can never pronounce that. Uh, now for renin, um, let me let me go a bit further with that. So renin is an enzyme, and it is secreted by the kidneys. Now, what's really important with this and why I've added it into the beta-1 receptors um, effects is that when renin is released, it eventually results. So eventually, I'm not, there's, a, there's a bit of a process, chemical process, and I'm, there's no way I'm going to go through that with you. But it eventually results in the formation of angiotensin 2 and that is well, from angiotensin 1 so basically angiotensin 1 would then later form into angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 2 is what we're looking at when it comes to the renin release because, and it's going to go straight back to uh, what we mentioned in uh, the alpha-1 receptors. Um, angiotensin 2 constricts 
arterioles. Let me just go back here, arterioles. And this constriction causes a rise in both systolic and diastolic. Oh, let me just write, write that in case you don't know how to spell it. Diastolic blood pressure. Now, again, um, I will not go into the full intracellular actions because that is way more than you really need to know. I am focused on information truly relevant to you at an EMT paramedic level. And that is essentially the release of renin by the kidneys aids in increasing blood pressure. So if, if you get anything from here, it's that renin is increasing blood pressure. Okay, so we've covered uh, the alpha-1 and the beta-2 uh, alpha-1 receptors and the beta-1 receptors. Now let's go to the last receptor, but again, um, not least, is the beta-2s. So adrenaline acts on beta-2 receptors. So let's highlight that again. Well, I'll highlight this one. So with beta-2 receptors, essentially, it's got to mainly do with the respiratory system. So when adrenaline binds to beta-2 receptors, its effect produces bronco dilation and bronchodilation is essentially uh, that's how we're gonna do it yeah I'll put in red just to make it different to you it's the expansion of the bronchial air passage or air passages oh gosh actually more simply um, Bronchodilation is essentially, uh, it's, uh, it opens the airway. So it opens, opens up the airway. So with anaphylaxis, you have that airway difficulty. It, it starts to constrict, in, in, including in asthma as well. When you have severe life-threatening asthma, um, you have that bronchoconstriction. Well, this reverts that and opens up the airway. So beta 2 is all about the respiratory system and getting patients um, breathing again. So now we know with the beta alpha ones and the beta ones and the beta twos. Now we know what they are. There's also another really important pharmacodynamic with it when it comes to adrenaline, and that is um, adrenaline uh, reduces histamine release. Super important to remember histamine release. In fact, super important. I put that in a separate line. Now, why is that, guys? Why why does it reduce uh, histamine release? Well, um, let me go down here. So, adrenaline essentially antagonizes the actions or the action of histamine by acting on effector cells. And all you need to know is that it reduces, all you need to know is because of this antag antagonizing of the um, effector cells, this reduces the release of histamine and other mediators. And in medical emergencies like anaphylaxis, there is significant histamine release that stimulates vasodilation and increased vascular permeability. So those are things we don't want as it drops the blood pressure and then that causes poor perfusion and if prolonged, can damage organs due to lack of blood. So by administering adrenaline, you're also stopping or reducing the release of histamines, which is super important to be aware of. Okay, we've gone for a bit of time now, but we're almost at the end. So that is that covers most of the pharmacodynamics of adrenaline. So we'll head off to now the precautions part, and that should finish it up for today's class. I hope <laughs> it hasn't been too much for you guys. Uh, I am slowly getting better at this, but it's something that I'm still getting used to. So I do apologize if my pronunciations or if I'm talking a bit too fast. You do have the option to slow down the videos if you have to.
Okay, so we've covered the pharmacodynamics, we covered the definition. Um, let's go through precautions and adverse effects of administration. So adverse effects. And there are quite a few to list. Um, so I'll go down in kind of more structured order. So the central nervous system. Central nervous system. Or the CNS. You have anxiety. Um, mm, yeah, I'll just do that. Dizziness. Nervousness. Um, headaches. And agitation. And that is exactly why I was explaining in, the, in, in previously that when you're interacting with patients, it's so important to keep them calm because when they're stressed, they're going to be releasing adrenaline naturally in the body from the adrenal gland. And now that you know what the effect of adrenaline can be, which is agitation and nervousness and dizziness, um, that can hinder your treatment plan as a paramedic or an EMT. So always never raise your voice, never you know try and incite um, hostilities always be the better person and work towards building that rapport with patients even if they're causing you the headache you got to remain calm take some deep breaths so with the central nervous system ticked we're going to go to the next one and that's the cardiovascular okay let's go with that perfect uh, now with the cardiovascular you have arrhythmias so generally you have the tachycardias um, chest pain Hypertension. Oh. oh no, that's right. Tension. Palpitations. And tissue ischemia. Perfect. Um, let's go with the endocrine. So with the endocrine system you have, you know, hyperglycemia. You have hypokalemia. And uh, lactic acidosis. Now, if you don't know what some of these are, I will be eventually going through each and every single one of these medical conditions in their own separate videos. So be to just um, be patient with me. I do try and make, as, uh, make time to produce these videos. And if there's one you really want to know uh, or you really want to be taught by me, just um, send me a message or comment in the chat that you want to know about hyperkalemia and I will make my best effort to produce a video around that. Okay, let's go with the respiratory. You see you have dysphenia, dyspenia, oh. and pulmonary edemia. Now, with the precautions, I like to make a really important note here is that it's not an exhaustive list, but it's one that you should be aware of that can happen after administering uh, adrenaline. Generally, since adrenaline is naturally produced by the body, these adverse effects, so these adverse effects, effects happen when you administer Administer significant amounts. So that's the thing to be aware of. If you have, let's just say, a cardiac arrest patient and you're giving them, or uh, sorry, an anaphylactic patient and you're giving them heaps of morphine, you know, my, 500 micrograms up to micrograms, um, just be aware that you know, these effects can happen. And also, be mindful. I mentioned earlier that adrenaline uh, can cause hypertension, tachycardia, and arrhythmias, but do note in many cases, especially in patients um, having anaphylaxis, for example, who so anaphylaxis, who generally have what what is it um, um, high heart rate, so high HR, 
and uh, and low blood pressure, low BP, uh, which are the classic clinical presentations in anaphylaxis. There are some, some paramedics or EMTs that are worried that the administration of adrenaline could worsen the already elevated heart rate and put them into uh, arrhythmia. And, oh yeah, so it, in, this, in, in this instance, it's important to note that in these patients, the high heart rate is a direct result of the patient's drop in blood pressure. When the body notes there is not enough blood circulating to maintain adequate perfusion, the increase in heart rate will happen to compensate that. Um, when adrenaline is released, we noted that it acts on the alpha receptors, resulting in prefer um, peripheral vasoconstriction. It also re reduces histamine release, which is directed directly related to vasodilation. Um, this vasoconstriction of the blood pressure, um, oh sorry, this vasoconstriction will increase the blood pressure. And once the body detects the change, the heart rate generally will stabilize afterwards. So if you treat the actual symptoms and you treat the condition, um, you shouldn't, there shouldn't be a real issue because um, the heart rate is only high because it's detected a low blood pressure. So in these situations, being aware of the pharmacodynamics and having greater than surface level knowledge is critical in making the best decisions for your patients and results in the greatest positive outcomes. So that ends it for this uh, session, for this class. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I think the next one we'll go through is either metazolam or oxytocin, or even subunimal. So uh, if you like this, make sure to give it a thumbs up, um, and you want to see more of these videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. All right, fantastic to have you, and I hope to see you next time.